Hi everyone, this is Steve Gaterman, and I've got uh, Dan Hickman here with me. We are doing the uh, webinars for the CABR presented by the Realty Lender Committee, and today's topic is the FHA update, specifically the changes to the mortgage insurance premium that are taking effect in, a, in about a week. Um, so um, if you have questions, you can post them on the, the toolbar of the GoToMeeting. So, uh, we can take some questions while the presentation is going or at the end, so feel free to, to type a question in there. But I um, want to talk about the changes with mortgage insurance, uh, FHA specifically. So this was announced about two months ago, and the annual MIP, also known as mortgage insurance premium, is uh, increasing effective the first. It's going to go up by 10 basis points or 0.1%, not a significant amount, but a little bit. Uh, and it's effective on April 1st. Now, that means that case numbers ordered by April 1st is when this becomes effective. So let's explain that. Case numbers are ordered after, and I think there's a next slide talking about that, uh, are ordered by lenders after the application takes place and when you have an accepted purchase contract. So at this point, you're going to run really close to not getting the old MIP uh, if you are just now writing an offer or haven't written an offer yet. So um, it's not the date of the contract, not the application, but actually it has to be an application taken by the lender and submitted to HUD for the request, and it takes a couple extra days for that. So just know it's going to change, and we're kind of running out of time with regards to that. Um, the annual LP is paid monthly. It's uh, paid monthly installments each month, and the calculation on the next page is the factor divided by the base loan amount, and that base loan amount is before the upfront MIP is added on divided by 12. So uh, for example, the next screen gives you kind of an example. Um, if the loan term is greater than 15 years and they are putting out less than 5%, it's going from 1.25 to 1.35% effective, of course, April 1st. So base loan uh, divided by the MIP um, is the upfront MIP, and the upfront MIP is actually 1.75. That is not changing, by the way. As you probably know, the mortgage insurance is paid two ways, the upfront MIP and the, and the annual. So there's an example. $100,000 purchase price, you've got the minimum down payment of 3.5%, a base loan of 96.5. So you take that new factor times the loan amount, and you get 13.02. And you divide that by 12, and it's $108.50 per month on that particular example, which is not a large amount. Um, for example, it's going to go up in this case about eight dollars. So, not a significant amount. Uh, really, it's not going to kill a deal, uh, but it has been going up, to, uh, you know, for a while. The last couple, like the last twelve months, I think it's, it's increased a couple times. I think, Dan, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, last spring as well. So, the reason for that, if I can kind of digress, is that the the fund this money goes into the the mutual mortgage insurance fund basically goes into offset losses with the FHA program, uh, much like private mortgage insurance with conventional. The money gets set aside to offset losses that lenders might have due to defaults. Well, that mortgage insurance fund, mutual mortgage insurance fund, is uh, getting uh, low, and uh, the way to increase that, of course, is increase the premium. So it's a way to keep the FHA program afloat and running uh, oper operating properly. So that's the reason for the increase. Uh, how they decide to increase the amounts they do, have no way of knowing that. Uh, they have changed both the upfront MIP and also the monthly from time to time, but this time it was just the monthly. So uh, now with the increases, it's, it's probably a good time to kind of take a look at this change compared to conventional financing. Because as the monthly mortgage insurance increases, uh, more people here recently have been looking at the FHA compared to the conventional. So we're going to go through a couple examples kind of show you the differences as well. So let's see the next slide here. So interest rates typically not affected by, uh, um, I say FHA are not affected by the, the credit scores as much as conventionals are. Uh, right now in our current market, usually you can get a better rate on the FHA than you can conventional. And the FICO scores, the credit scores also have more effect on the rate on a conventional than they do with FHA. So PMI, private mortgage insurance, is the name for the insurance for the conventional loan, and FHA, of course, is the mortgage insurance premium. Uh, buyers with a stronger FICO may be able to 
use conventional financing to better serve right now. They do need more down payment in some cases, though. So um, your, your loan originator, loan officer, is going to be probably your best bet to, to decide as far as which is the best option. But I think it warrants a conversation, uh, at, especially the first of home buyer with small down payments. Let's take a look at the FHA and conventional. FHA historically is going to be a little more lenient on credit, uh, but with regards to the EMI costs, good time to take a look at it. So this screen shows an example of conventional loans you can get with many lenders with just 3% down. The rates and the mortgage insurance are a little bit higher, but to compare that with FHA at 3.5% down on this screen, you've got 3% down on conventional, 35 on FHA. You can see the rate is 4% on the conventional compared to 3 and a quarter. And the mortgage insurance you'll see is pretty similar, 109.93 versus 108 on the FHA. The overall payment is going to be less with FHA, 535.88 compared to 570 because the rate is less than the conventional. Again, this is just 3% down on the conventional and 3 on FHA, and that's a credit score of 680 also. So the next screen shows another comparison between the two. This one has 5% down. So 5,000 down on the conventional and FHA. The rate is still 4% and FHA is still 3 and a quarter. But you'll see the mortgage insurance dropped down to $74 versus the 102 on the FHA. So that payment is slightly higher than conventional, 527.96 versus 523, but it's very close as you can see, even though the rates are a little bit higher on the conventional. So again, that's credit score 680. And the credit score does affect both the rate and the mortgage insurance, especially on the conventional loan. And the next screen, I think we've got another comparison with a higher credit score. So this one has 3% down, uh, conventional and 3.5 on the FHA. You'll see the rate is actually better because the FICO score is better, 720. And the FHA is still 3.25%. And, and the mortgage insurance ends up being less as well because, than FHA and before because the credit score is actually better than the 680 we had previously. So in this example, 542 versus the 535, still FHA wins out, but you can see the rate gets better. So these three examples should give you an indication that um, when your buyers are talking to lenders, definitely uh, should be talking about conventional compared to the FHA right now based on these scenarios. Overall, with lower credit scores, you're going to have uh, overall probably lower rates and lower payments on FHA, but if they have really good credit scores, and they've got, you know, 3 to 5% down. It's a good chance to look at the conventional as well. Conventional loan, the seller may pay the, premium, the PMI, and the buyers uh, uh, do not have the PMI on the loan as far as the house payment. On FHA loans, the seller may pay the upfront MIP, which is 1.75%, and will still have the monthly MI. So with conventional versus FHA, you still have that upfront MIP with FHA at the 1.75%. We did put that in our examples, of course, but there's another cost added to that loan balance and take away some of their equity. Again, we suggest talking these examples with your lender because lenders will have different programs, different rates, of course, and the PMI might be slightly different based on the lender's uh, criteria. Uh, but the strong buyer will have more options that they'll have is based on the uh, credit score. If your buyer is eligible for a VA or the USDA, that's another consideration as well. Um, Neither FHA or conventional uh, likely to win in this case because the no down payment and the overall mortgage insurance, although it's called something different on both VA and FA and USDA, it's called something different but very similar. Theirs is just an upfront with not a monthly amount, except for the USDA has a small monthly amount now. But uh, again, you ought to put these two other scenarios into consideration as well if they are in a USDA area and or a veteran. One of the big change too, and this one I think is uh, a little more impactful than the upfront MIP is that the, the monthly amount has historically dropped off after five years and once the customer has reached a 78% loan to value or 22% equity, that's based on the original value. Unlike conventional, you have to use original value with FHA, but it's automatic. It would drop off at some point down the road uh, no sooner than five years. Well, the change that affects uh, June 3rd Actually, that may not drop off at all. If they are putting down the minimum down payment, it will stay on for the life of the loan. That monthly amount will stay on for the life of the loan. If they're putting down 10%, then it'll stay on for 11 years. So again, as I said, right now the rule is five years. 
uh, with 22% equity, but it's going to be going to either 11 years with 10% down or for the life of the loan uh, with a small down payment. So that's a pretty big change. Uh, most people stay in their house around 10 years, so for the average person it may not be a big issue uh, if they are putting 10% down, but it's definitely a consideration worth, uh, worth taking a look at. So we kind of went through that relatively quickly. Um, you may have some questions, right? And I don't see any questions uh, that are appearing. Um, but I uh, wanted to stress as well that the, the case number, when that is ordered, that's when it becomes effective. So if you have somebody that's looking right now and they want to take advantage of FHA's program and take advantage of the lower MIP and they don't have a contract, then they probably should be writing very quickly. If they do have a contract, get them into the lender and have them apply and get the case and order by the lender as soon as possible so they can save them both the, uh, the monthly MI. Uh, the other changes, as I said, are taking effect in June, and that's the, the upfront MIP dropping off, uh, both 11 years and for the life of the loan. Uh, but um, this is a good time, as we've said, to uh, take a look at the conventional as well. Any, uh, any input on that, Dan, you'd like to comment on? I think you covered it really well, Steve. I, I think it's a great point to emphasize this case number assignment issue. You know, this is just a little over a week away at this point. If they're negotiating a contract right now, they get it accepted over this weekend. They get into their lender by, you know, obviously as soon as possible, but by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, their lender should be able to get their case number assigned before the end of the week. But with April 1st being the following Monday, they're going to need to get in there into their lender at least by the early to mid part of next week to get that case number then again, as we illustrated on this presentation, the increase is not significant. On an average size FHA loan, and the average size FHA loan nationally is somewhere around 170, it's going to increase around $15, $16 a month on their, on their house payment. So it's not huge, but you know, it's, it's nice to be able to get them in under the wire with the current MI premium before the increase. And the other thing we really tried to emphasize on this presentation today the borrowers uh, with the higher credit scores, the higher a credit score that a borrower has, the better their options. Their loan officer can talk through all of those things with them, and, and you as their agent can make sure that they're talking with the right loan originators that will have those conversations and compare conventional to FHA. And again, if they're, if they're a veteran, VA wins hands down anyway almost 100% of the time. Or if that house is in a, in a USDA in a rural area, USDA is pretty much always going to win. So. Um, the other thing being, uh, one of the slides here talked about um, seller concessions. You know, the seller can pay the upfront MIP on that FHA loan. It's only one and three quarters percent, as Steve said, and then the buyer just has to worry about paying the monthly portion in his payment every month. That's a great option um, as sellers are trying to sell their houses. Uh, although I think it's kind of a seller's market right now. There seems to be a more and more yeah a limit of uh, listings out there, uh, but. Um, and of course, on conventional loans, you know, buyers, buyers with the high credit scores, most lenders have available to them uh, programs where they can just put the three percent down, like we talked about, and the seller can actually pay that MI premium as a concession, and then they don't have any PMI at all, uh, other than in a roundabout way they've worked it into their purchase price. But anyway, that's a lot to chew on, I guess. But we wanted to kind of reiterate that. Here is a question about um, emailing the chart that we put up. We're, we've recorded this uh, session. We're going to send it to um, Annette. Uh, and um, the chart with the uh, MI premium, um, that we just put the one thing up, right. the scenario with uh, you know the minimum down. And most people going FHA do go with minimum down. But uh, there is a chart from HUD, and we'll be glad to we'll make sure we get that to Annette as well. Yeah, so Annette will be able to forward both the presentation and the chart that we can have add to that as well. Um, the uh, we do these at least once a month. We did actually two this month in March. The next one is April fourth, and the topic is uh, roadmap to closing, which will go over some uh, pitfalls that uh, people run into and in, in giving some solutions to keep your your transactions on on track and closing on time. So that's going to be in the fourth. Um, we try to make these topics timely based on what the market is bearing and what's going on in the industry, especially our local market. So if you have suggestions for future topics, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, those will be filtered through uh, Annette Shamil at the Board of Realtors, of course. But uh, I don't see any other questions at this point. So 
Um, I appreciate everyone signing on. We're going to sign off here and hope we we'll see you in two weeks on the, the next presentation of the webinar. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.